pleasure to be here. We learn a lot about singing and dancing and acting and how to incorporate it into our lives so that we can better ourselves with the industry and really get acquainted with everything. Having Richard Sherman here is amazing because it's the first time that we get to step out of our little OSHA world and learn something completely new, which is amazing. And he's written songs such as Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, <laughs> which, um, that has inspired so many of us at OSHA. And knowing that he wrote that song is such an amazing, it's amazing. And so I think we're all really excited to be here and to learn from him and to allow ourselves to be open to a whole new realm of singing and composing. Richard Sherman is, he's been around for a little bit, so I think he's probably very excited to inspire the youth and keep his message and his influence continuing. So um, I think we're all very ready to absorb that too. I'm very excited to hear supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brett Shuford. I'm a Broadway actor. I, I was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on Broadway, uh, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, of course, I did Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on Broadway with Richard, and, uh, and we met back then in 2006. Uh, and, and I got involved with this performance because Scott Barnhart, who runs the musical theater program here at OSHA, and I have been best friends for years. We went to college together, and uh, he thought it would be fun to sort of incorporate uh, that part of Richard's life, the Broadway uh, life that he had. I'm a huge Disney fan. I'm a huge fan of Walt Disney, and um, to, to be able to have that connection to that legacy through knowing him and working with him is really uh, inspirational. The, the whole world is at his feet. He asked us to come and write songs for him. I couldn't believe it. It was just the most wonderful moment I remember of all. Richard Sherman and his brother, um, their music of course, I think, I, I, when I met him, I said to him, there isn't a child alive today that doesn't know at least one of your songs. I mean, they're so influential uh, in so many people's childhood. Oh, you, I wanna be like you. I believe that Richard Sherman and, and uh, the Sherman Brothers' music is inspirational because they really clue into um, not only are the songs catchy. I mean, they get in your head and they never leave. I think that they really write songs that uplift the spirit, uplift people's, um, it speaks to the optimism, I think, in human beings. And of course, these days, I think we all need as much optimism as possible, but uh, the lasting legacy they've created is that the world always needs that. And they are able to, every time you hear one of their songs, it really, not only, depending on the song, can uplift your spirits or really connect to you to, um, that part of us that believes that there's good out there in the world. A gentle breeze from hush of my mountain softly flows o'er lullaby bay. It fills the sails of boats that are waiting. It to hush my mountain. 
I think that today what we're doing uh, with this concert is these kids who probably don't even realize this guy wrote so many songs that they know so well. I mean, we're in Orange County, Disneyland is up the road, um, but they probably don't realize that it came from this guy's hands. We wrote a lot of things together, and uh, I guess that's why I'm here, because of the Sherman Brothers, what we did together in those years. I think they're going to be able to connect with, uh, again, a legacy uh, that has brought so much joy to so many children and families in this world. And, you know, music is, especially for arts students, is in, you know, performing arts and uh, music academy, uh, I think knowing that they can leave this kind of legacy for themselves as well as what will inspire them today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susan Egan, and I was in the very first graduating class of OSHA so, so many years ago. I just confessed something to Mr. Sherman today, and that is the very first year of OSHA, it was my senior year of high school, and we did a very illegal production of, of Mary Poppins. <laughs> have a pretty significant Disney history, other than just, you know, living here and going to Disneyland as a kid. Um, yes, I was involved in Disney's very first Broadway show, which was Beauty and the Beast, which happened to also be my very first Broadway show, and I got to play um, Belle, which was incredible. Uh, but even before that, I had met uh, Richard Sherman through Bruce Kimmel, who's part of the program today, because Bruce is an album producer, and I did a couple of albums where I had the great good fortune of recording some uh, Sherman Brothers music, so that was pretty awesome. And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake, a log, a spring. It's very clear to see that a spoonful of sugar. Richard's music is the soundtrack to so many of our childhoods. When I was growing up, it was the music of uh, Richard that that changed everything from Mary Poppins to um, even non-Disney things like Chitty Bang Bang. Um, it's, a, it's truly the most melodic, happiest music that can transport you out of wherever you are into this realm of magic. And then when I met the man, you know, they tell you sometimes, be careful when you meet your heroes, but in this case, he surpassed every expectation. He is as delightful and beautiful as every single song he's written. I mean, you meet him and you recognize instantly where all of that music came from. It's interesting because Richard's music, I think more than anybody else's, is completely universal. I mean, It's a Small World is known worldwide and is a song that brings people together. for a composer is to write something that sounds simple. A lot of composers, especially young ones, go very complicated um, because they think that sounds uh, I don't know, more interesting or something. The, the simpler the song, the harder it is to write, and Richard is a master of writing a simple song that immediately just becomes part of your molecular makeup. Everybody knows this music. It's, it's literally in our cells. You can travel on the highway of your life. One is smooth, one has gravel, one has happiness. The students who are going here seem to recognize their good fortune. It's not something they're gonna recognize 10 years down the line, how lucky they were to be here. They seem to know it in the moment, in this instance. And as an artist who comes back, that's the most fulfilling thing. Richard Sherman has been a friend of mine for over 20 years. And when Ralph reached out asking if I knew of anybody who might wanna to come to a master series, I immediately thought of him because I knew the students of OSHA would get it. They would get it, this man is beyond icon status, and they're gonna to get to meet him today and be able to say in 20 years when they come back to OSHA, oh, you know what, I was there that day Richard Sherman was at OSHA. I'll never forget it. I loved his optimistic message that he had. It, um, 
really resonated and the way he talked about how songs are split into three parts not just the the melody and the lyrics but there's also the thought of it what drives sort of the story I think he was he was incredibly inspiring because he also he shared that he wasn't always like super successful he had his his low moments and that it sort of like inspired us to keep going and like follow our dreams not to not to think about the bad times and dwell on it but think about the good times and use those to propel us forward my question was sort of where does it start I have there's always a trouble with the songwriter, what comes first, like chicken or the egg, the lyrics or the melody. Start, chicken or the egg, lyrics or melody. What typically do you do when you start writing? Do you have the lyrics first or the melody? And he answered, his answer was really, it was about the idea. That's what sort of sparks it. It doesn't matter if it's the lyrics or the melody, but the, what the idea, what causes it, what you want it to be. That gives it, he said like, it could be a ballad or and all that, and it drives it basically, the idea of the song. Rose, and then also the style of the song you want to write. You have to know. You have to know styles, you have to know the various styles of songs that have been written and what, what do you want to fit into, what kind of a statement do you want to make. And if it's a funny statement, if it's a serious statement, if it's a sad statement, what it is. I think his words are extremely inspiring to me because as a songwriter I always, it's like the struggle, you know, and it's, and sort of what he has is this idea and I always try to like, oh I'm going to write these lyrics first, I'm going to write the music first, but he, his, about the ideas, that really resonated with me and it really, made me think more about when I start to write a song, what am I thinking, what do I want, what is the song? I'm just, I'm blown away, honestly. It's it's such an inspirational moment in, in our time right now because to watch a man who's literally a walking history book, I mean, walking history figure, to be coming into our school like this and and talk about the his experiences and the collaborations he had and, 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 have, and have people sing the songs that he composed right in front of us with him right there. I mean, that's just, it, it's connecting the dots, it's history. And it's, it's, it's so, it's inspirational. It's inspirational to be a part of and, and inspires people like me and other students to, to, to go that. That go that mile, go that place. It's pretty awesome. He talked about having a dream and, and and never stopping for that dream. And he talked about I think the best part of what he talked about is that you're gonna fall down and you're gonna have moments in your life where you're gonna go down and you're gonna be down in the ditches and people are not gonna be looking at you as much as they were that one moment. But he talks about having the dream and that having that dream that you want to get somewhere and you want to be in that place and keep going and never stop going for that one dream. Everything isn't successful, successful, successful. It's going to be failure, 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 boom, all of a sudden when you don't expect it. The least thing that you expect is the one that happens for you. So it's just part of, part of it. It's, it's uh, part of the game. But the, 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 the nice thing is, things you thought were dead sometimes come back to life. I think that was one of the biggest moments like I just had like where he talked about like well I was in here and I I didn't I wasn't doing anything really I had three things canceled and it, 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 it makes him more human you know like you look at all these people who have done such big things and you just as an artist you just think about the things that they've done big and it's just they've done these big 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 things and you, you forget that they had to come from somewhere to get to that big place and even after the big place they fall down but then keep going and I think that 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 advice that he had was the biggest thing. Sharing sharing a song with somebody that they like I think singing a song with somebody that the person who wrote it is already a magical moment, right? Because then you're 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 basically sharing their art with them. And for someone like Richard Sherman who wrote this simple but so amazing and inspirational tune that is all over the Disney parks. It's all over everything Disney. It it's 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 amazing. It's it, I looked around and I was just like, guys, like this is this is it. This is the guy who created this tune, and we now get to share this moment with him in this time in history. So that 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 part of that time was amazing. It was just one of those things that my friend Bruce Kimmel uh, had uh, committed us to it, and I said, well, that sounds wonderful. It's a group of wonderful kids out here. I'd love to do that. Wonderful. We have done this before for other places, and we love doing it, so we're very excited to be here tonight. When I was very young, I, I was very, very moved by music. I didn't realize how vital it was going to be to my life, but sad, you know, melodic music made me cry. So I was very emotional with music, and I felt overcome with happiness when I heard happy music, and uh, my family recognized I was musical. And, my dad was musical, my mother was musical, so, you know. 
If anything, I hope that they, if the students have dreams of doing something, stay with the dream, try, keep trying. Even if it doesn't succeed, you, you have fun having the journey. Keep trying to do it, trying to make it happen. It's very important. After many, many years of trying and trying and trying, we wrote one song that really sort of caught on. And of course, when you recognize your opportunity, you got to give it everything you've got. You just go. It is so nice to meet you. You are nice you. incredible. Oh, bless you. There's like kindness in your music, and it just shows. You know, oh, if you're having a sad day, it just totally brings everything out. You know, yeah. having a bad day, I just take a listen, and it's just, it's so incredible. And it, it really showed today. And I think you kept going back to being kind and being happy. Yes. And I think a lot of the times people forget that, you know, it's okay to be happy even when there's bad things. Of you course. Know? The thing is, everybody gets a, a great dose of sadness in their life. There's always that. But the, the thing that sort of makes life worth living is to hold on to the happy things, the good thoughts. And so sometimes you got to really cling to those things. But that's the important thing. Yeah, and that just means so much to me because I always want to try to be kind. And yeah. you saying that just brought like chills <laughs> everywhere. I was just like, it's kind, incredible. Kindness and, and giving love. It costs nothing to do that. You know, I love doing that song because it, you're talking about wow. birds and. and bags of crumbs, and you're not really talking about that at all. No. so much nicer without laying it on with a trowel, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's always good. It helps people kind of understand it more, yeah. especially through song. This viscerally you understand it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was just incredible. That it... The world needs what music gives. Understanding, emotion, love, caring, these things, yes, the world needs it desperately. Music is, is a great deliverer of these things. <laughs>